Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to TSN, or the Sasuke Nerds, and today I'm going to be doing my Sasuke 40 review. If I could sum up this tournament in one word, it would be historical. And if I couldn't use that word, it would be unique. This tournament is a one-of-a-kind that cannot be compared to anything else. This is just... it's Sasuke 40. I'd also like to apologize if this review seems all over the place. I don't really have a script, as I don't really have a script for all of my reviews. I sort of just go off the top of my head. I have a bare-bones set of notes here. I'm gonna read off of that. So, in this review, I'm gonna go through uh, the tournament by stage. I normally go by pros and cons, but I feel like that's too limiting, so I'm just gonna go through the tournament as it happened, through each and every stage, and I'm gonna give my general thoughts at the end. So without further ado, let's start with stage one. And this stage one could not have started worse, in my opinion. The first 30 to 40 runs ha had it all, basically. It had really bad editing, lots of cuts and digests, especially to some people who didn't, in my opinion, deserve to get cut or digest, most notably Katsuhide Torisawa, Takashi Honma, Yusuke Goto, among others. There's also a lot of digest, I believe, after Issa's run, we got like 15, 20 cuts and digests, which is pretty ridiculous, although to an extent I can understand that, as you don't really want to show a lot of boring fails from people that, admittedly, the fans don't really care about. But it is still, it was still sort of weird to see. After Sugeta's run, however, I do think things really started to pick up in terms of results and pacing. As then we got a great moment in Shinsuke Nagasaki clearing for the first time since Sasuke 35. We saw Hitoshi Kano almost clear. I did call that uh, Koji Hashimoto and Naoki Akatani would also get digested, and that was a bit unfortunate, but hey, it's not gonna be perfect. From then on out, though, I do think the editing, apart from one or two places, was incredible, and the results were also just unbelievable. And with the results, that is really what carries this tournament for me, and in stage one, like, where do I even begin? Okay, well, I I'm gonna try, at least. Uh, let let's start here. Uh, Kajihara, Hayate Kajihara, having one of the fastest first stage clears of all time, just destroying the course. Uh, you had Ryuichi Tsukada clearing for the first time in over five years, Jun Sato doing what he does best on his return, you also had uh, Yusuke Suzuki, at the time anyway, more on that later, tying the record for oldest clear, Ayano Oshima becoming the first Japanese woman since Chie Tanabe and Sasuke 2 to clear the first stage, um, not only that, you had Steffi Edelman and Jesse Graf also clearing, having it so that it's the first time in history that multiple women cleared the first stage. Um, Oliver Edelman cleared, you had Kawaguchi Tomohiro clearing as well, uh, Yuji Rishihara also clearing, but I think the elephant in the room here is Kane Kusugi and Shingo Yamamoto clearing. Both are 48 years old. Kane Kasugi hasn't competed in 21 years, Shingo hasn't cleared in 8 years, and both of them cleared, and those moments, I don't believe I've felt such joy and shock ever as watching, in watching that show ever. That was insane, and are definitely contenders for some of the greatest moments in this show's history. I would argue that Kane Kasugi's clear is up there with the greatest, and... It was just unbelievable. I will never get to watch that live again. And that was just un that was just incredible. We also had some great runs from Katsumi Yamada, Kazuhiko Akiyama, and Makoto Nagano, fellow All-Stars, putting up great runs as well. Yamada actually looked fairly decent up until the fishbone. Akiyama gave it a good go and got as far as he could. And Nagano's run was quite emotional as he came very close to clearing at the age of 50, timing it on the second wall. Speaking of Nagano, we had Nagano's son, Kayo Nagano, also compete, and while it was sort of underwhelming to see him fail on the rolling hill, I do think it was still a great moment for the show. It was a huge moment, huge emotional moment in the show, which I was glad to see. 
And the run before him, Yuta Nakajima, 14-year-old Black Tiger, getting all the way to the second wall was just insanity. And I'm definitely looking forward to how he will do in the future. But overall, while it had a very, very poor start, I think Stage 1 ended incredibly, and even though there were plenty of issues in terms of editing and pacing, we had like a 7-8 clear digest for crying out loud in the middle, I do think this was extremely entertaining, and honestly, that's king for me. As long as something is entertaining, I will enjoy it. But there were glaring issues, especially with the Dragon Glider. The Dragon Glider derailed for so many people, and that was an issue. Um, and overall, the course just felt way too easy, which has been a problem since God knows how long with this stage one. I mean, for God's sake, Hayati Kachihara getting almost 40 seconds left is a really bad problem, especially since this is meant to be a new era of the show. Uh, more on that later. But let's go on to stage two. We had 24 people in this stage, which is the most since Sasuke 34. And I think stage two was great as well. Uh, the time limit was reduced, uh, and that significantly fixed the speed issue of last time. Uh, also, obstacles such as the backstream felt a lot more formidable uh, compared to previous tournaments, because we actually had people struggle with it. People such as Masashi Hiyoki and Kane Kasugi and God knows all struggled with the backstream, which is something that we have not seen in a long time and is quite refreshing to see, honestly. Yeah, great results all around. We did have a record-breaking amount of clears. We had 12 clears out of 24, which is the most in Sasuke history. We had a lot of close calls as well. We had uh, Tomohiro Kawaguchi clearing with less than 0.1 seconds left. Yuji also cutting it close. Keitaro Yamamoto cutting it close. This was great as a speed stage. And uh, yeah, I'm glad it's like this. But again, I do feel the course is way too easy because even though this is another speed stage again, 12 clears out of 24. I also had a big issue with some of the digest through this. We had a large five clear digest from Sato Jun all the way to Tomohiro Muto, all five of them cleared. Or six, sorry, because you also include uh, Yusuke Suzuki. I also had a big issue with the uh, triple digest of internationals. Steffi Edelman, Jesse Graf, and Oliver Edelman all got digested. Um, Kawaguchi, Yuji, and Yusuke also all got digested. There was a lot of digests, and I, I get it to an extent because there's 24 runs in this stage, but it was it was still an issue, especially when you're you're showing people like uh, <laughs> you're showing people like Ryuichi Sukata uh, over people like Yuji Urashihara and Yusuke Morimoto, and I feel like that's an issue, and that's sort of the issue with Sasuke 40 in general for me. You have unbelievable, fantastic results that are among the best of all time, but then you follow it up with extremely poor editing choices, which, to an extent, I understand, but at the same time, sort of leave a sour taste in the mouth, and I can't deny that. Shingo Yamamoto and Ken Kasugi also gave it a good go, in my opinion, especially for being 48. Getting all the way to the backstream and reverse conveyor, respectively, that's an accomplishment, and if both are competing next time, I'm really looking forward to how they do, especially Shingo, because he has this momentum on his side. Could he make a mini comeback as he did in Sasuke 29 and 30? And if somehow we see Kane back, can he continue this momentum and continue his 100% clear rate? We'll have to wait and see. It was also nice seeing Shinsuke Nagasaki back, and even though he got digested and failed the spider drop, I believe he got as far as he could, and I'm fairly happy with how he did. I'm not I'm not completely mad. You'll see in my uh, reactions soon enough anyway. But overall, the issue with Stage 2 is sort of what the issue is with this entire tournament for me. You have fantastic results and presentation, but the editing and digest choices, as well as the general difficulty of the course, are severely lacking and just sort of nearly negate all of this fantastic like results and presentation and everything it, it's sort of just a huge issue for me and i can't overlook that but now stage three stage three has been known in recent tournaments for just having drama from front to back just unbelievable nail-biting moments 
This stage 3 is no different and surpasses so many in my opinion. We had drama from front to back alright. We had great runs basically anywhere you look. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, Yoshiyuki Yamamoto cleared. What else do I need to say here? That run was fantastic. It looked like he was barely breaking a sweat. That pipe slider save was incredible. We did have a digest of Hayati Kajahara and Sato Jin, but both failed the cliffhanger dimension. I can't really uh, fault that. Oh yeah, speaking of the cliffhanger dimension. Uh, you know how a few days, a few weeks ago, I made a video on the whole Ninjathlon controversy? And how it could affect Sasuke's copyrights to obstacles such as the cliffhanger and all that? Well, my worst fears came true. Uh, the spider walk was changed to the spider run. And the cliffhanger dimension was changed to the cliff dimension. That is embarrassing. That Sasuke, the founding father of Ninja Warrior, has lost the rights to call their obstacles what they are to one man. That is a humiliation on the ninja stage. Again, they again, Spider Walk is now Spider Run, and Cliffhanger Dimension is now Cliff Dimension. I'll probably make a full video on this at some point. But yeah, this this was a humiliation. That was humiliating to see. But I didn't let it affect me too much because obviously it's just a name and I'm still just going to call it the Cliffhanger Dimension and Spider Walk anyway. So I don't really care too much, but it's still really embarrassing. I also found the editing once again to be a massive issue in this stage. Tatsuya Tada cleared the stage and still got a mid cut and was basically treated like his entire run was nothing. And that is the problem the entire tournament with Tada. They digested and cut him and made him just... His run just felt like it was insignificant, even though he did extremely well. And that's so annoying to me. Like, I don't get why they keep doing this to Tada. I get that it's sort of expected that he does well every single time. But still, like, you just... What is it with, Ta like, Anui's editing and Tatsuya Tada? Because it makes them, like, it makes me feel like they just don't care. And that's sort of a massive issue and really sort of leads a sour taste. Because, like, he's incredible. He's one of the best competitors around. You'd think they show him dignity by at least giving him a full stage 3 run. But, and there's more in the final that I will go on in a bit. But continuing on, we also had great drama with Kaitaro Yamamoto making it all the way to the pipe slider, agonizingly failing the jump. Speaking of the pipe slider, I felt like getting rid of the stoppers was a good move, actually making the obstacle pretty difficult. Tada had a great save on it, had trouble with the stopper. Kaitaro couldn't make a save, fell back in a way that was similar to Yusuke in 29. But after another digest and a Kawaguchi fail, we went on to the last two runs, which I do think are the best of this stage. Yuji Rishihara battling back at the age of 44, getting through the swing edge and the cliffhanger dimension, breaking his own record for the oldest ever clear on this obstacle, and coming agonizingly close to clearing the vertical limit. That was heartbreaking, but then again expected because the guy is 44. And then we had Yusuke who, as everyone expected, just destroyed the course, even though he did have some Issues with the vertical limit, he was quite kind of tired before attempting it, even though that didn't matter at the end of the day because he cleared it anyway. But yeah, overall stage 3 was great, editing sort of dragged it down as it did with every single stage in this tournament, but the results did certainly make up for it. And now, the final stage. It was finally revealed, and to everyone's shock, uh, that's kidding by the way, we all knew this, the fi new final stage obstacle was a rock wall. Wow, what a shock. I do think the rock wall, which is called speed climbing, did really shake up things a lot and potentially could have changed the results as a lot of people, such as Yoshiyuki Yamamoto and Tatsuya Tada, who were the first two to attempt this, didn't really know what to do with this because it didn't really seem like they were as comfortable on a rock wall uh, as someone else would be. And that really affected their runs. Yoshiyuki Yamamoto uh, timed up just as he got to the rope and Tatsuya Tada as we expected, struggled with the Salmon Ladder. But I think the pinnacle of this was Yusuke Morimoto's run. Yusuke, I believe, as a, if I remember correctly, has a rock wall and has been practicing for this, as I think he knew there was a rock wall. He has been practicing relentlessly for the stage and had the opportunity to get his third Kansen. And he came agonizingly close in a similar way to how he failed in Sasuke 36, timing out less than a second from Kansen Seiha, which is agonizing, it was a great moment, but it does 
highlight something. I do think that uh, generally this course was way too easy, and having three finalists only two tournaments into an era is a massive problem. So, what are my general feelings on this tournament? So, for me, while the results were absolutely unbelievable, and this was a one-of-a-kind experience to watch, and the in my opinion, the presentation was fantastic in times, and some changes were made in places they needed it to be, such as the pipe slider and the backstream. The editing across stages at times, as well as the course being way, way too easy, really leave a sour taste and knock this down for me a bit. Inui and Fullcom and TBS need to change things in this show from front to back. This needs a total overhaul. But however, entertainment is king for me, and this is one of, if not the most entertaining and rewatchable tournaments of all time. I rewatched this tournament just before my review, and this thing still feels as fresh as when I watched it for the first time. This is incredible, and definitely a lot more rewatchable than Sasuke 39 and maybe even 38 was. This was great, in my opinion, and even though there was a lot of issues with the editing and presentation in terms of, like, digests and cuts and all that, which I do think were a major issue, this was incredibly entertaining and enjoyable. And so, I'm going to give Sasuke 40 an 8 out of 10. It's a fantastic tournament, but it is knocked down by the editing, and I can't give it anything higher as much as I want to. So yeah, 8 out of 10. And that is my Sasuke 40 review. But what do you think about Sasuke 40? Leave your opinions in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Sasuke Nerds. Peace out, y'all.